Sinjur waved his hands and a small carpet appeared. Ning was a little surprised. That looks lie, come on, teacher Ning. This is one of the fastest flying artifacts I own, Sinjur said with pride in his eyes. This, how did you come by this, Principal Sinjur? Ning asked. Oh, teacher Eleonora made this for the academy a decade or so ago, Sinjur said. Eleonora made this huh? Ning said, she probably wanted you to see the world in this. Huh? What do you mean? Sinjur asked in confusion. Ning chuckled like a little boy at his own jokes. Nothing, he said and jumped onto the flying carpet. Let's go. Sinjur started the carpet and it started flying. Holy, this really is fast, Ning said. He was fully surprised at how fast the carpet was moving. Right? Our teacher Eleonora is truly a talented artifact maker. I can't believe she's not even 300 years old, Sinjur said. That's probably cause of her system, Ning thought but kept the thought to himself. I was wondering how we would make it to the capital so fast. Turns out you had such an amazing artifact, Ning said. Does teacher Eleonora make a lot of artifacts for the academy? Yes. We finance her a little and she gives us a few artifacts a year. We then either store that artifact in the treasury or sell it to earn money to better finance the sect. Sinjur then looked at Ning and said, Once you gain the golden badge, you too will have to start making pills for us, or start taming beasts that we can use. I see. Other than the student's fee, this is how you run the sect, Ning said with a slight smile. Yes, does it feel scummy to you? Sinjur asked. No, it's fine. In fact, this might be better. If the academy is funding your study as a professional, what else could you want, Ning said. Haha, you are easy to talk with, teacher Ning, Sinjur said while stroking his long white beard. The two of them flew through the night at incredible speed. Ning felt bored. He could easily teleport all the way to the capital and it would cost him barely any energy. But because he lied, he now has to be stuck with Principal Sinjur for a whole day and more. He decided to cultivate for a while and sat cross-legged. He silently started pulling in chi from the surrounding in a vortex of brilliant light while at the same time many injuries started appearing all around him. Sinjur was surprised at first and started worrying to ask what was happening, but Ning let him know through his divine sense that it was normal for him. Sinjur was still worried, but no longer tried to do anything. He let Ning cultivate throughout the night and mostly into the morning. Tisk. Cultivating barely makes a dent in my overall cultivation. I guess I really should take it slow. Also, it might be time to buy that advanced body cultivation too. Sigh. Do I really waste trillions of energy for this? He wondered. But when he thought of Hai-C and Anya as well as their children's lifespan, he felt greatly motivated to bid it. I should look into that later. He thought and finally stopped cultivating for now. Ning slowly opened his eyes before noon and saw that they were flying near some village. The children in the village waved their hands towards them like a child on earth would wave his hands when seeing a helicopter. He then looked towards Sinjur who didn't seem too flustered, but Ning could see some strain in his forehead. Principal Sinjur, are you okay? He asked. Ah, oh, it's nothing. I'm just running a little low on chi. I will try to cultivate this while I fly this, that should be fine, he said. If you are low on chi, let me fly it. I just cultivated, so I have plenty chi to spare, Ning said. Are you sure? Sinjur asked. Of course, leave it to me, Ning said. Sinjur handed over the control and Ning started flying. With Sinjur cultivating, Ning was all alone on the route to the capital. But in that loneliness, he also found a bit of solace. It reminded him of his current life flying through time, all alone. Night fell and laid its veil in the world. But even through that veil, Ning could clearly see a piercing light that fought to remove the majesty of the night. Ning smiled and spoke, We're here, Principal. Sinjur stopped cultivating and opened his eyes. Oh look at that, it's so beautiful. Truly deserving of being the capital, he said. Ning agreed with him. Multicolored light reigned over the night over what seemed like a golden city. The city looked like it was set on a mountain with a massive castle at the top and other houses along the slope of the mountain. The closer they got the better view Ning got. It reminded him a little of the Seven Light City where he left Anya, except this one was a single mountain and a massive one at that. So this is the Golden Moon City, huh? Ning said. Yes, Sinjur said with a smile on his face. It's been a while since I've been here, but the beauty never seems to die. All right, let's stop around there, Ning said. Sure, Sinjur took the ship to an open area and both of them jumped to the ground. 
all cities had restricted flying zones, so they would have to walk from there. Even in the dead of night, there are so many people coming in and out huh? Ning said while looking at the line of people and carriages waiting to enter. Well, the city hardly ever sleeps, Sinjur said. They were stopped by the guard, in which instance Sinjur showed his identity and was promptly let inside. A black-robed man walked up from and bowed to Ning and Sinjur. Gentlemen, I have been waiting for you. Ning and Sinjur looked in front of them and saw the black-robed man standing. You are? Sinjur asked. I'm a servant of the majesty. You can call me Eula, the man said. Ning checked the man's information and saw that he was only in the third realm of nascent soul realm. Even though the robe is black, it looks like he is not from the shadow guards, Ning thought. Please, follow me, Eula said and took them through the streets. Ning looked around at the bustling streets, every single house painted in golden color. Do people here dislike the other colors? Ning asked. Oh no, Mr. Ning. These buildings are painted golden under the orders of His Majesty, Eula said. I see, Ning said as he continued looking through the streets. I see more cultivators than mortals. No wonder the city is so alive at nighttime as well, Ning said. Eula didn't speak, while Sinjur just smiled and Ning whole looked around. They thought it was because Ning had never seen such cities before, while in reality, Ning was just comparing the cities in his mind to the many ones he had visited in the southern continent. They walked until Eula stopped in front of a massive building that turned out to be a hotel. His Majesty has made sure to book you a top room in the finest hotel in the Golden Room City, Eula said before walking in to find the manager of the hotel. The Royal Abode, that feels like a name that should be illegal, Ning said lightly. This hotel was built under the Emperor's orders, so it is named like that, Sinjur explained. Ning nodded in understanding and walked inside. Eula had already sorted out his keys, so they directly flew up the main stair hall. When they reached the room, Eula handed them the key and said, I will come to find you in a few hours for the ceremony. If you happen to leave the hotel before then, please tell the manager where you will go, Eula said. Of course, Ning said. Eula bowed and was about to leave when a voice came from the side. Oh, is this the hero? A person said. Eula turned to the side and immediately bowed, Your Highness, this is Ning Ruigong the hero that will be awarded in the ceremony taking place this afternoon. Ning looked at the newcomer thinking it was the emperor from how Eula addressed him, but the person he saw was a younger man and had slightly different facial features than what Trabor and the other wore as their face. This is? Ning asked. Prince Battle, it's a pleasure to meet you, Sinjur suddenly bowed. Ning looked at the prince and nodded a little. Nice to meet you, Prince Battle, he said. Battle's facial expression changed for a split second before returning back to how it was. However, that was enough for Ning to catch it, does he dislike being not respected like a prince? He wondered. He quickly checked the prince's information and found something interesting, he's already in the sixth realm. Then why is his aura at second realm? Ning wondered. I heard you killed the bad guys all by yourself, how strong are you? Battle asked. I'm, strong enough, Ning said with a smile. Can you show me your real cultivation base? I'm curious, Battle asked. What? No, this is my real cultivation base, Ning said. Huh? Don't lie. I already heard how strong that Gassane family's son was. He was already in the nascent soul realm nearly a century ago. You cannot beat him with this measly cultivation base, Battle said. Prince Battle, believe it or not, Teacher Ning here did in fact defeat the invaders, Sinjur said. If that is so, then where is the body? Battle asked. I buried it, Ning said. Buried? You can't just bury that bastard. That was someone looking to destroy my family. We need to put him on a spike to show what happens to people that mess with the Wyan dynasty, Battle shouted. Tell me, where is the body? I will send men to dig it up, Battle said. It's already decomposed. You won't find a full body, Ning said. Huh? Battle said. Why do I feel like you're lying to me? What need I have to lie to you? Ning asked. He was starting to get irked talking to this prince. Then just tell me where the body is, Battle asked. Man, just leave it. He's dead. Your dynasty is safe. There's no need to spread hatred any further, Ning said. What? Speak respectfully. I am the crown prince of the empire. Address me with the respect I deserve, Battle said. Ning scoffed. You want respect? Here you go he said and turned around before pushing Sinjur into the room and closing the door. Battle stood there in silence for a moment, 
did he just, he was in disbelief that someone could be so disrespectful. That bastard, I will kill him, he started shouting. Prince Battle. He is the emperor's guest. Please think twice before saying such things, Eula said. Battle suddenly stopped talking. He feared the emperor a great lot after the emperor had learned something about him. I, I will leave now. I will be there in the ceremony later, he said and left. Ning walked inside with Sinjur and looked around the magnificent room with multiple rooms inside of there. The emperor didn't cut costs when making this hotel, did he? Ning said. Teacher Ning, what you did out there, you shouldn't have done that, Sinjur said, a little scared. The prince? Don't worry about him. If he's simple-minded enough to send assassins after me for just a simple disrespect, then you should be more worried about where the empire would be headed once he takes the throne, Ning said. Aye, I guess you are right, Sinjur said as he thought for a bit. All right, I will go into my room and cultivate a bit. I spent a little too much chi when flying all the way here, Ning said and walked to his room. Knock 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 Ning stopped cultivating when he heard the knock on the door, he stood up and curiously walked out to the door. Since he was inside a city, he didn't use his spiritual sense without reserve, so he could only wonder who came to meet him in the morning. When he opened the door, he saw a young ish man wearing a green robe with a gentle smile on his face. Ning looked at the man and thought his face looked familiar, but couldn't immediately make out from where. Are you, Teacher Ning? He asked. Yes, who might you be? Ning asked. Ah, so it is you. Nice to meet you, Teacher Ning. You can call me Kindly, the man said. Oh, what may I help you with, Brother Kindly? Ning asked. Nothing, Teacher Ning. I heard that you were here, and came over to thank you, Kindly said. Thank, me? Ning was a little confused. Yes, thanks to you, my wife and son are safe, Kindly said. Ning was even more confused. I'm sorry, your wife and son? Are they also in the academy? Ning asked. Yes. My wife is a beast master's teacher while my son is a student. Now that I think about it, aren't you the teacher that's helping my son with his problem? Kindly asked. Your son's problem? Ah, are you perhaps Nilo's father? Ning asked. Yes. He's my son. So you are his teacher too? To think not only are you helping him, you saved him too, Kindly said. Thank you from the bottom of my heart, Teacher Ning. Oh, there's no need for that. Nilo is a talented kid, he's doing everything himself. I'm just guiding him on what not to do, Ning said. Sometimes, that's just what kids need, don't they? Kindly said with a smile. Oh right, you said you had a wife in the academy? I wonder if I know her, Ning said. Probably not, Kindly said. She has sort of retired from teaching. She only occasionally teaches the classes. Still, she likes to stay there and look after our son while I stay here and do my job. I see. I didn't know you could retire, Ning said. I heard you were allowed once you get the golden badge, but I'm not really sure, Kindly said. Anyway, thank you once again, Teacher Ning. Also, I'm sorry if I disturbed you. I perhaps should have waited a little longer before coming, but I couldn't wait. It's fine, Brother Kindly. Don't worry about it, Ning said. All right, thank you. I'll see you later, Kindly said and left. Ning closed the door and walked back in. So, Gonez fought against me because Nilo's mother was a Golden Star teacher? He wanted to get close to her, huh? Makes sense given that she was a beast master too, Ning thought. Sinjur walked out of his room and asked, Who was that? Ah. Just someone grateful to me for saving his son and wife who are in the academy, Ning said. Oh, news must have spread around fast, Sinjur said. Anyway, I'm going back to my room. I guess I will just stay there until the ceremony, Ning said. That's not a bad idea, Sinjur said. So, the two of them waited. A few hours later another knock rang on their door. Ning walked up and opened it. This time it was Eula who had come. Gentlemen, it's time for the ceremony. Please come out when you're ready, Eula said. Okay, Ning said and went back in to let Sinjur know. Ning changed into a better looking robe for the ceremony and walked out with Sinjur. They flew down the stair hall and reached the bottom of the hotel, then, they walked out of the door into the golden light. Ning was shocked at just how much light was being reflected around thanks to the golden walls. There was not a single dark shadow on the road. There was some part of the wall that reflected down onto the street. That looks amazing, he thought, and it's also somehow not hot on the streets at all. They walked up the mountain as they went closer and closer to the royal palace. Along the way, 
Ning could see a large number of people that also went up the mountain. The ceremony must be really big, Ning said. Of course, Sinjur said. You protected the most important place in the empire from 70 different nascent soul realm cultivators. It's not every day that happens. To be honest, I don't think there has been a single ceremony in the last 300 years where someone was handed a medal of honor, Sinjur said. Oh, who got the last one? Ning asked. I think. The last one was the Saint Alchemist for creating a 10th grade pill, Sinjur said. Oh right, I did want to ask people about him. Where is the Saint Alchemist now? Ning asked. I, don't know. He's an elusive figure. He should be either roaming the continent or in closed cultivation somewhere, Sinjur said. Well, if he does resurface somewhere, he is such an important figure that the entire empire will find out about it instantly. I see, Ning said. I guess getting a medal isn't really that bad. The only thing that irks me is that it's the damn emperor that will be giving it to me. Ning had lived for a long time, but he was still unsure if he could control his emotions enough after he saw the emperor. I pray I don't kill him by accident, he thought. They made their way past the group of people on the street and saw a massive platform created right outside the royal palace. Oh, the ceremony is taking place here, Sinjur said. I wonder if the four high nobles came too. Principal Sinjur, I'm afraid you will have to wait here for now. Only teacher Ning can go any further, Eula said. Sinjur nodded and looked towards Ning. Good luck. Ning nodded and walked with Eula who took him onto the stage where a few people were already staying there. I cannot go any further. Please proceed on your own, Eula told Ning as he stayed behind right before the stage prepared for the ceremony. There were a few people on the stage already, so Ning walked up. Oh, there are quite a few more than I had assumed, he thought. There were at least 20 people, men, and women he didn't recognize at all. Except for two. Brother Ning, Kindly called him. Seeing that he was the only person there that he was remotely familiar with and not wanting to socialize with the others, Ning walked next to Kindly and sat on the empty seat. I didn't expect to see you here, Brother Kindly, Ning said. Haha, I told you I would see you later, didn't I? Kindly said with a smile. The other people turned around to look at Ning. Some even tried to extend their greetings. Ning talked to them as least as he could. He quickly came to learn that these people were indeed from great noble families. When they saw that Ning didn't want to talk, they turned around and didn't disturb him any further. Ning could see Battle far away looking at him quite annoyed. Is he still angry about me being disrespectful? Ning thought. Kindly brought up more questions about his son and Ning's general life. Ning answered as truthfully as he could. By the way, Brother Kindly, why don't you leave for the Five Professions City as well? Ning asked. Wouldn't it be better to stay with your family? Oh, haha, I would love to, Brother Ning. But, I have responsibilities here I simply can't leave, Kindly said with a sad smile. I at least wanted my wife to come back, but she keeps saying that I will have to wait until our son is well enough to stand on his two feet, Kindly said. But he already can, Ning said. Sigh, but she doesn't think that. Her mother's heart won't let her see him as anything but a little child, Kindly said while shaking his head. Anyway, it's not like I'm really lonely or anything, so she can. Suddenly, the group of the audience started making excessive noise that distracted both Kindly and Ning at once. What's happening? Did the emperor come? Ning said. Kindly looked around and said, Oh, there he is. Ning turned to look and saw a familiar face floating down from the sky. That was the same face that had the despair and tragedy that Trebor was feeling, yet this one was a completely different person. The emperor was smiling and waving gently towards the crowd. He landed on the stage and looked around as he sent his divine sense to check everything. His senses landed on Ning for a split second more and he realized his guest was here. He smiled towards Ning and nodded a little. Ning was suddenly feeling agitated. The secondhand hatred he felt for the emperor on behalf of Trebor was starting to surface. This was the person who destroyed an entire family for his own greediness, Ning thought. However, Trebor's injustice was not his to avenge. He was but a mere watcher on the side. The most he could do was watch from the side. The emperor walked up to the front of the stage and looked at the crowd of people and smiled. My fellow citizens, I hope you are having a wonderful time. Today is a day that doesn't come by very often in the history of our empire. In my lifetime, I have only seen three of these days, and only one of those was where I was standing here. The Medal of Honor is awarded to someone who has either done something that was previously deemed impossible or shown great bravery and protected the empire from a threat. 
Today's Medal of Honor is for the bravery a single teacher showed to fight off 70 nascent Soul Realm cultivators all on his own, the Emperor said. Gasps rang out everywhere. People couldn't believe the number as that just seemed impossible. If 70 nascent Soul Realm cultivators fought another 70 nascent Soul Realm cultivators, even then the chances of all the second 70 nascent Soul Realm cultivators dying was impossible. So, people naturally were very surprised when the Emperor revealed what he did. The information hadn't spread as fast as it could have and was kept under wraps for the majority of the people, so they were all pretty surprised. Let me introduce you to the person that did it. Please come forth, my child, the Emperor said. Ning took a deep breath to reel in his emotions and stood up before walking up in front of everyone. This is Teacher Ning, an alchemy and beastmaster teacher from the Five Professions Academy. He is a silver starred teacher for both of those professions too. And he is the man responsible for defeating the invaders of the academy and killing the 70 nascent soul realm enemies, the emperor said. So, I award him with the most prestigious award I can, the Medal of Honor. The emperor brought out a fully gold medal that seemed to have an insignia of the Wyan family as well as a single character stamped on it that said, Honor. The emperor took the ribbons and put them around Ning's neck awarding him the medal. People clapped and Ning smiled slightly for the audience. People, congratulate teacher Ning for being the first man in the last 300 years to get the Medal of Honor, the Emperor shouted. He protected his academy, but he also did more than that, he protected the Empire. People got both curious and confused as to what he was about to say. The invader, stop, Ning said from the side, you already ruined his life while he was alive. Don't ruin it while he is dead. The emperor stopped talking and looked towards the side at Ning with a confused look. What do you mean? The emperor asked. Ning was getting slightly angry, you know damn well what I mean. The emperor was more confused than anything. What am I supposed to know? He asked. You know what I mean, Ning scowled. About what you did to the Gassane. You already ruined their family and name. At least let them be in peace while they're dead. The emperor thought for a bit. Hmm, maybe you were right. Although they did try to go for the throne, they were good people beforehand. Maybe executing their family for treason is enough punishment. Yes, let's not make a mockery out of their existence. Sigh, why did they ever lose their head and think they could take the throne, the emperor lamented. Ning gave the emperor a scrutinizing look and asked, I'm sure most people already know it, so why are you trying to hide it? Hide what? The emperor asked while making a confused face. About the truth? Regarding the Gassane family, Ning said, When have I spoken anything but the truth? The emperor said with a proud but sad face. Ning started getting confused now. Either the emperor is really good at acting, or something fishy is going on here, he thought. Are you trying to say that there was no other reason behind Gassane family's attack on the throne other than just wanting the throne? Ning asked. The emperor looked confused too. What other reason could there be? The emperor asked. How about making laws that always hurt the Gassane? How about attacking their business? Or maybe, I don't know, killing their firstborn who was coming to ask for peace? Ning asked. That's probably enough reasons to start an all-out war, right? The noble family started whispering amongst themselves when they heard Ning. The emperor started to get slightly angry now. Mr. Ning, please don't think that I won't have you punished for spreading unfounded lies. The Gassane family's firstborn son was killed next to my bedroom. He was coming to assassinate me at night. If not for my guards, I would have been dead that day. At first I thought it was something the son did on his own, so I didn't even try to do anything. But before I knew it, they were charging for us. If we weren't fast enough to gather allies to fight back, we might have been the one to lose that day. I lost trusted friends and subordinates that day. Please do not insult them by saying it was something we made happen, the emperor said. What? Ning was confused. He wanted to check the emperor's history but that would take a lot of time to read. So you are saying you never made laws or took actions that hampered the Gassane's trade? Ning asked. Never, I only did what the court suggests. Most of the time, the idea for the change doesn't even lie on my hand. My job is to mostly interfere as I feel the change to be for the bad. If it's not, I just approve it. As for something that was hampering Gassane's trade, I never did anything to make that happen. If it did, then it was just an unfortunate coincidence, the emperor said. Ning looked to the side and saw the people nodding their head. From what he could see, the emperor didn't seem to be saying anything wrong. I did what I had to that day, the emperor said, 
The only thing I regret doing is killing off the Gassane family that did not take a part in the war. I was blinded by anger and ended up giving orders that I should not have, the emperor said while shaking his head. Ning didn't know what to say anymore. Everything the emperor was saying seemed correct at least from what he could see. If he wanted to really know the answer then he would have to use the system. Ning closed his eyes and thought of a single question to ask. Then, who was the culprit behind Gassane family's destruction? The emperor looked confused and said, of course, it was the family itself. Maybe the first son, maybe the father. Ning heard the emperor's answer but could care less about it. The question he had asked wasn't for the emperor after all. He looked at the blue screen floating in front of him that gave him the answer for a fraction of the price. He clicked buy. A single piece of information floated into his mind and he got the answer, but simply knowing the answer wasn't enough, he needed to prove it too. Is the palace's security so bad that a single assassin can nearly reach the emperor's quarters? Ning asked. Um, not really, but we assume the sun had some abilities in concealment, the emperor said. Then, what about the allies that came to your aid? Would they have made it to your door before the Gassane came when they were rushing for war? Ning asked. Uh, no, but that was thanks to my son's foresight, the emperor said. My son realized that the Gassanes would go to war for their son and started gathering allies before they even attacked. And you think the great family would send their army on the words of a young prince alone? How was it that you did not know that your son was gathering an army of his own? Do you not have subordinates that let you know about what is going on in the palace? Ning asked. That, the emperor started thinking. Are you trying to say something? Battle Wyan stood up from his seat and walked up to Ning while constantly huffing in anger. I know you were the one behind the Gassane's fall, Battle. I just want to know why. Why did Price Battle Wyan seek to destroy the Gassane family? Ning asked. Stop defaming me, you bastard, Battle said as he ran up and punched Ning in the face. However, Ning's face didn't move. The only thing that moved was his eyes lids as he closed them to look for the information he had just gotten. Ha! Huh. So you decided to kill Royd just because he was having an affair with the daughter of the Blevins family, huh? Ning asked. You instigated the fall of an entire family just because the girl you liked, liked somebody else? Ning asked. Battle looked shook but controlled himself. You are my father's guest so I won't say anything, but please don't go around spreading these lies, Battle said. Oh, if you say it's not true, then do you dare eat this truth-seeking pill? Ning asked as he brought out a pill from his storage. WH what's a truth-seeking pill? Battle asked fearfully. Of course, as it's named, you cannot lie after you've eaten this pill, Ning said. W what if it's a poison? Why would I eat this? Battle said. The emperor looked at his son's scared posture and asked, Son, did you really have a hand in the Gassane family's fall? What? Of course not father, don't believe him, battle proclaimed loudly. Then let me ask another question. Why do you hide your cultivation base so much? Ning asked. Battle's eyes shifted towards Ning as fear shifted to anger. I'm not hiding anything, battle said. Then, I guess you will die from this attack. Ning suddenly jumped forward and attacked the prince. Dozens of black shadows flew at him to stop him, but they weren't fast enough at all. With no other choice, Battle flared his sixth nascent soul cultivation base and stopped Ning's attack. However, when he blocked it, he realized there was barely any force behind it. The shadow guards were about to strike Ning when the emperor shouted, Stop! I'm not an idiot to truly try and kill a prince, but, you do have quite an impressive cultivation base, Prince Battle. Mind telling me why you're hiding it? Ning asked. At the same time, Ning started searching through his interface to get a basic version of what had truly taken place for the Gassane's destruction. I see, the truth is not far off, but it's so different, Ning thought once he finished reading it all. I didn't know the Empire had such a strange rule, Emperor Reen, Ning said. Strange rule? Which one? The Emperor asked while still having a shocked expression from his son's cultivation base. I didn't know that the person who killed the Emperor became the Emperor, Ning said. The emperor suddenly got apprehensive towards Ning. He didn't know how strong he actually was, but he knew better than to go with his cultivation base as a measure for his strength. I'm not the one you have to be scared of right now, emperor, Ning said. The emperor thought about what he meant when he finally understood. He immediately turned around to look at battle. You were hiding your cultivation base so you could attack me at the right time? He asked in horror. He couldn't believe that his own son would try to take his throne. No father, of course I wasn't, 
Battle tried to explain, but Ning was there to force the truth out of him. He sneakily threw the pill into his mouth and the prince unknowingly swallowed it. Why would I need to hurt you father, when the throne will be pa, the throne should be mine, he shouted. Almost immediately he stopped his mouth, however, even then he couldn't stop speaking. The old man's time should have been gone years ago, but he ate the life revitalizing pill that the saint alchemist made to get his honor and now he can live for another thousand years more. It's not fair, that is why I will invoke this old rule, and get the throne for myself, Battle said. The audience couldn't hear anything that was being said thanks to a veil that had already been put up, but the family heads on the stage could. Some of them were surprised that the prince was thinking about treason, he was planning on killing the old emperor to become one himself. You, wanted to kill me? The emperor said, so everything teacher Ning has said today, is true? Obviously, stupid old man. I killed the first son of their family because he was having an affair with that bitch. It was an impulsive mistake really. When I saw that he was alone, I sent my men to kill him. However, after I realized what I had done, I made it look like he was going to assassinate you. You thought he was trying to take the throne for himself and got scared. Then I went and called in my connection to protect our family from the Gassanes. You wouldn't have known there was an attack if I hadn't notified you old man, Battle said. I knew how terrified you were of losing the throne. You only changed after that day when you realized what horrors you had committed. Battle tried to stop himself, but it was physically impossible for him to stop talking. Damn it! What the fuck is this pill? Why am I talking so much? The emperor was horrified. You would kill me to get the throne? Your own father? He asked. Fuck! It wasn't supposed to be like this. You were supposed to die in your sleep. Fuck! Why can't I stop talking? Fuck it, men. The situation has changed. The plan is changing too. Attack my father's men, battle shouted out. Suddenly, hordes of people started taking out their weapons and attacking someone next to them who was just looking at the commotion. What, Brother Gray? Why are you attacking me? Ouch, why did you do that? Tisk. Finally, he moves forward with the plan. I've been meaning to kill you for quite some time now, but the timing just wasn't right. Old man Hearn, you were the reason my father committed suicide, so I hope you don't mind if I stab you a little. The emperor watched in horror as he saw the people around him turn on each other. The family heads attacked the other ones, the guards in the venue attacked another guard. Even his own shadow guards were attacking the others. Ning was surprised too and looked all around him. No, stop, the emperor was too shocked to speak loudly, please street. Watch out. Ning saw the attack through the corner of his eyes, but he couldn't stop it in time. The emperor flared his cultivation base at the last minute, but he was still stabbed through his waist by battle at the last second. No. Ning heard many people shout from far away, he caught the emperor and pulled him back. In a single motion, he pulled out a pill and put it into the emperor's mouth. Eat it! He shouted. The emperor swallowed the pill in his mouth without question and slowly his body started healing back up. That was a ninth grade healing pill. If that did not heal the emperor, then Ning would be better off giving up on alchemy. Thank God I made those few pills, he thought. During the last month or two, he had realized that there were a lot of things he couldn't do with the interface as fast as he could with the AI. One of those things was quickly saving someone's life. With the AI, he could quickly tell it to heal the person, and it knew what Ning meant. But the interface didn't know what he wanted, so, he would have to spend some time setting the filters to just what he wanted. He couldn't afford that sort of delay when saving a person's life, so, he had made as many healing pills as he could. No, the emperor said softly, my soul, it's gone. Ning suddenly looked towards him and tried to feel his cultivation aura, but there was none. While Ning had managed to save his life, the emperor's cultivation base was dead. Kill him! Battle shouted. Suddenly, a black light flashed in front of Ning as an extremely black spear with a single crimson colored blade came out. The shaft of the spear was made using a very durable material that absorbed most of the energy it suffered into it. The blade was made up of a very sharp and hard, crimson metal that had a single characteristic feature. It transferred energy all over itself hundreds of times in a matter of seconds. Together, they formed the perfect spear for the current Ning. Ning blocked the sword and pushed it back, he stepped to the side to dodge the incoming attack and hacked off that person's neck. In the same motion, he also killed off the nascent soul that was escaping as well. 
He back kicked the first attacker and sent him flying. Emperor we need to leave, Ning said and pulled up the emperor. He looked for directions to leave and saw that the entirety of the audience was staring at them. The men, then women, the children, and the elderly. Everyone was watching the massacre with wide, unbelieving eyes. Shit. Ning thought. He couldn't teleport out this way. If he showed everyone what he could do, that could bring problems. Maybe not bad ones, but annoying ones for sure. Aegis, he called out. Aegis came out and looked at the surrounding, immediately ready to fight. Take him and fly as far as you can, he said. Blue, he called out. The large flood dragon immediately scared the people into backing off. Kill anyone who tries to stop Aegis, he said. Finally, night, he called out. A two meter tall black blob of nothingness appeared in front of everybody that soon grew to be nearly three meters tall as night lifted his head straight. The flood dragon had scared them because they knew what they were looking at, but night was different. The surrounding light immediately dimmed when he appeared and that scared people. Not knowing what they were looking at was very scary for them. Ning immediately flared his divine sense and captured every single person fighting there. If you are on the emperor's side, scream yes, Ning shouted. Yes. People shouted. Him, Ning said internally, and Knight knew who he was talking about. The next moment, Knight was nowhere to be seen. He was gone, and so was Kindly. Him, 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 her, him, her, Ning started telling Knight who to save. In the next couple of moments, people started disappearing one by one. What's happening? The remaining people shouted. That bird, I can barely keep up with my eyes, a person shouted. It's the bird? Another person asked. People kept on disappearing for a while, and then Ning finally spoke. Are none of you the emperor's men? People looked at each other but no answer came out. Knight returned next to Ning and looked at the corpses on the stage. Although he had saved many, a few had still died. There are always casualties in fights like this. Dead people are inevitable. We need to learn to look beyond their deaths and understand that we are still alive, Ning said. Knight didn't understand if Ning was telling that to him, or if it was meant for Ning himself. All right, it seems none of these people are the emperor's men, so I think I'm okay with fighting them, Ning said as he cracked his fingers. What are you waiting for, idiots? Battle shouted, he's just one man, just kill him. The people who just had their fighting partner stolen ran towards Ning in droves to kill him. You stay behind night, it's been a while since I've had a good fight. Ning didn't use any fancy, colorful moves, or used any special techniques. Hell, he didn't even dodge half the time. He just took his spear and cut people. He would block a person's sword and dodge another's spear. He would then cut the arrow flying through the air and take the fire slash to the face with just a small scratch. When he felt like he had blocked a lot of attacks, he would simply slash at the person closest to him. All the energy absorbed in the shaft would be released through the crimson blade. Family heads, guards, shadow guards. Everyone came attacking Ning but not a single one could survive him. People started getting scared and flying away, or would just let their nascent soul fly away. Most of the time, Ning couldn't get to them. In those times, Knight would fly up to them and kill them. In this way, in less than five minutes, Ning managed to kill all of Battle's supports with a single cut on his forehead that actually bled. The audience gasped. Some cried some vomited, and some fainted. They were all horrified at the massacre they had just witnessed. A single man killed multiple family heads, multiple guards, and shadow guards, and the only thing he got was a small cut on his forehead. I guess my body can't just stop everything even if it's at the late nascent soul realm. I will have to look into getting the better one, Ning thought. Knight flew back and stood right next to him. Blue returned too, along with Aegis carrying the emperor. Battle was already on the ground, horrified at all the death around him. Everything he had worked towards in the last 200 years was gone just like that. What do you want to do with him? I say kill him, but he's still the prince of the country so, your choice, Ning told the emperor. The emperor too started showing a blank expression when he saw everything. He had not expected the day to turn like this when he had started today. Emperor. Ning called out again. Wh what? The emperor finally woke up from his stupor and looked at Ning. What do we do with him? He asked. Teacher Ning, he might have done something bad, but, please don't kill him. He's still my son at the end of the day, the emperor said. Ning sighed. In the end, the emperor still loved his son. We can't let him go unpunished. Remember what he did, what his plans were. 
You can't let someone like that go, Ning said as he shook his head. But he's my son, the emperor said. I'm not saying to kill him. There are other ways to punish someone, Ning said. Seeing that the commotion on the stage had ended, the family head and the other people Knight had saved were returning to see the emperor make the verdict. Yes, the emperor said, cripple him and throw him into house arrest. Sure, Ning said walked forward. No, don't, don't. Battle shouted and immediately took out a talisman. Stop him, it's a teleportation talisman, somebody shouted. The talisman glowed bright, but in the next second, it was cut in half. You're not going anywhere, Ning said as he held his black spear. In the next moment, he stabbed through his nascent soul with such precise movement that he didn't cut through anything vital. No, Battle shouted as his cultivation base vanished as if it were mist on a hot day. The emperor's coldness slowly returned. Now that his father's side had done its part, the emperor's side of him needed to do its job. Guards, take him into the palace. Get some physician to heal him, I will deal with him later, the emperor said. The guards came forwards and took away battle. The emperor was teary eyes but was fully resolved now. How could it come to this? Just where did I go wrong? The emperor thought. He looked at his cultivation base and sighed. Father, are you okay? Your cultivation, it's, a voice came from the group as a man hurriedly walked forward. Son, your brother, he, the emperor sighed. Ning looked back, quite a lot surprised that the person who came up was Kindly. He was a prince. Ning thought in amazement. Why did brother do that? Why did he change so much? Kindly asked with tears in his eyes. So many people dead, just because he wanted the throne that was already his anyway. Why would brother do that? He said. That's what the throne does to you, my son. You always knew you weren't going to get it and hence showed no interest towards it, so you wouldn't understand. But when all the power in the empire is just a hand's length away, but you can't ever reach it, it's frustrating, to say the least. I can understand where your brother was coming from. Perhaps, I was at fault for taking too long to get off of it as well, the emperor said. I won't make that mistake anymore. The emperor suddenly turned to the audience and shouted, In the upcoming days, I will pass along my throne to my son. Kinley Wyan to become the rightful owner of the throne of the Galra Empire. What? The second prince is becoming the emperor. There will be new changes now. This is big news. People in the audience all started shouting in shock and confusion. Everyone, bow to your new emperor. The man people in the audience, guards, shadow guards, and family heads all dropped down to bow towards Kindly. The only two that did not were Ning and the emperor. The emperor wanted to say something to Ning, but decided not to. The coronation date will be announced soon. Look forward to it. For now, you are all dismissed, the emperor shouted. Congratulations, Brother Kindly. You are an emperor now, Ning said. Kindly, however, didn't have an excited face, or even a happy one. I, I don't feel so good being announced as the next emperor right after such a big massacre, he said as he looked at the corpses around him. Ah, right. Sorry about that. If I hadn't spoken about anything. Things would have passed peacefully, Ning said. However, injustice would have kept on going unnoticed if that was the case, Kindly said. I don't blame you for what you did, in fact, I commend you. But, it still feels very bad. Ning smiled. That means you have a good heart if you can feel pain for your enemies. Never lose that even when you are an emperor. Treat your people like you think they deserve. Same for your enemies. Although, try not to make many if you can. However, if you happen to make some and can't deal with them, just let me know, I will be in the academy for a long while now, Ning said. Thank you, Brother Ning. Let's leave this place for the people to clean up and take care of the corpses. We will send them all to their family for proper burial, Kindly said. You do that, Ning said. However, I will take my leave now. I won't be there for your coronation, so this is congratulations for you from me. Ning then took out a single pill and handed it to Kindly. This pill is a healing pill that will heal any illness, disease, injury, or venoms and poisons. It's a 10th grade pill, so use it wisely. After that, Ning flew down from the stage and walked into the crowd. The people parted to give him the way, while Ning made his way towards Singer. Kindly on the other hand looked at the pill in his hands in utter shock. The pill that the saint alchemist made to gain his title, was of the same grade as this one. And yet, Ning gave it out like it was nothing. Kindly wanted to thank Ning but he was gone too far away, so, he took in the pill and thanked him in his heart. He would also make sure to have his son learn from him as much as he could. 
If he was able to learn half of what Ning knew to make this pill, Nilo would have succeeded in life. Ning appeared next to a large city known as the Broken Soul City. It was a simple city on a flat plain and didn't have any distinguishing features to separate it from cities like the Golden Moon City or the Five Professions City. Still, the city had its own charm. Ning walked into the city and made his way through the marketplace around the afternoon before getting to a large mansion. He walked up to a guard and said, Is Lady Eleonora home? He asked, From what he could tell, Eleonora must have some faster artifacts to fly herself back home along with her brother. So, she should have been home by now. Yes, senior, the guards answered. They could see Ning's cultivation base and didn't dare disrespect him. Ning was finding it quite amazing how people didn't cause problems for him if his cultivation base was high. If he were to ask the same question as a Golden Core Realm cultivation, there was no doubt he would be sent away without a single answer. Can you let her know that I'm looking for her? Ning said, he had just been given the Medal of Honor and was there when the Emperor was attacked, so he was sure his name would spread in a few days. If people found out he was there, they would all group up to meet him, so he decided to not give his name away so easily. May I know what I should address you as, senior? The guard asked. Uh, just tell her the man with the system is here, Ning said. The guard nodded and walked back in. Soon, Ning could Eleonora's figure rushing out of the door. She was wearing a simple green dress along and had her hair braided behind her, she looked like a spoiled young miss, contrasting her identity as a stoic teacher. What are you doing here? I heard you had a seer. I'm done. So, I came to find you, we have a lot to talk about, Ning said. Of course, come inside, Eleonora called him in. I was waiting to talk with you but the staff started sending people home and I needed to fly my brother home. I assumed I would talk with you later, but it seems you couldn't wait at all she said with a chuckle as she walked in with Ning behind her. Did, did the young lady just laugh? One of the guards asked. So, I wasn't tripping. I have been here for decades and I haven't seen her smile aside from when she's with her family, the other one said. Eleonora took Ning inside the mansion. Ning looked at the inside and chuckled. You and your brother must have had it hard to suddenly switch to the academy quarters. Those are like hundreds of times worse than what this is, Ning said. Well, at first, yeah, but you get used to that, Eleonora said. The servants bowed towards Eleonora wherever she went and finally, she took him to a living room. Where are your parents, and your brother, Ning asked. I don't have a mother. She died over two centuries ago. As for brother and father, I believe father went out because of some urgent news he heard. He should be returning soon, she said. A servant walked in with some fruits and treats and laid them on the table. The hospitality is not bad, Ning said with a smile. Of course. We may be a smaller family compared to others, but we won't shy away from making our guests the most comfortable while they're at home, she said. Right, why is that? With all the artifacts you've made, your family should be well off on money, Ning asked. I don't sell everything I make. Most I keep for myself. Besides, it was only later that I've managed to make good ones, she said. If I sell those, I will definitely earn a lot of money but at the same time, I will also have a lot of enemies. My family is too small to fight off those vultures who will rip us apart alive if they saw the slightest hint of money on us, she said. I see, well, that's not a bad idea, Ning said. Still, you must be using your system way more than I am. Do you have the artifact system too? She asked curiously. No, mine is a different system. It's called the energy system and, I can do a lot of things with this, I guess. As long as I've gathered enough energy that is, Ning said. Oh, mine is a point-based system. I make artifacts and earn points. Then, I can buy stuff from a very long list of items, she said. Like the analysis you use to look at people's cultivation base? Ning asked with a smile. Yeah, well, sorry about how rude I was. As I said, I'm quite protective of my family, she said. Don't be. It was my fault in hiding my strength anyway, Ning said. Not like it helped at all. You're still much stronger than what I can see, Eleonora said. You need to get analysis that works on body cultivation too, Ning said. Eleonora moved her hands in front of her and made some typing gestures. Jesus Christ, it's 50 points? That's so expensive, she said. What's your normal point earning rate, he asked. I get one point per grade of item I make, she said. Since I make about 7 8th grade item every time. It will take me close to five months to earn this amount. Wait, does making artifact take this long? 
Ning asked. Oh no each of the artifacts I make has to be a new design, so it's annoying. Otherwise, I don't earn any points, she said. Since the artifact is new, it takes me time to make the blueprint. So, I usually end up taking close to half a month, if not more for most artifacts, she said. Hmm, that's not that good, Ning said. Oh right, by the way, I've been meaning to ask this, but... Are you from Earth? Eleonora's eyes went wide when she heard that. Did you learn that through analysis? She asked with a surprised face. It was hard to believe that a person could see into her past life. No, I can only look at information about your current life. Maybe because the system thinks of you as a complete person without your past life, or maybe because souls are energy, it can't look into your past life. Whatever the case may be, the reason I guessed you were from Earth was because of what you said just now, Ning said. What I said just now, Eleonora got a little surprised. Were you born a Christian in your past life? He asked. Oh that, yeah I tend to say, Jesus Christ, when I'm surprised or sacred. Nothing to do with my religion previously, she said and then stopped. Wait, does that mean you are from Earth too? She asked. Yeah, I was born in China, Ning said. My name should have given that away already if it didn't, Ning Ruigong. Ah, I'm sorry. I didn't really know much about the world in my previous life. I was just a sick girl who would stay at home, away from any germs and just watch TV. I died before I ever got around to watching anything Asian other than the cartoons, she said. Well, I was an orphan in my past life. So, I didn't have the best chance to gain knowledge when growing up either, Ning said. By the way, I saw that you made a flying carpet for the principal. Did you get the idea from that one movie? Ning asked. Yeah, I loved that movie and would watch it all the time when I was in my room, she said with a nostalgic smile. Anyway, it's quite a coincidence that we both died and were reborn at the same time. Ha, huh, the better coincidence is we both reincarnated to the same planet, and from what I can gather, around the same time too, Ning said. You say that like there were many other choices, Eleonora said with a slight chuckle. Ning looked at her dead in the eyes and said, yes, there are. There are billions of planets in this universe that are habitable. Maybe more. The fact that we happen to come to the same planet is truly a massive coincidence. Or maybe it is no coincidence at all, Ning thought. Besides, I wasn't reborn. I don't have parents. I'm not even human anymore actually, Ning said. What? What do you mean? Are you a beast? She asked. No, I'm, Ning smiled. How about I tell you that after we've spent some more time? I don't feel very good about revealing all of my information, Ning said. That's fine, she said. All right, let's talk about the system once more. How good would you say your system is compared to mine? Uh, it's not even comparable, Ning said. Just the fact that I earn, uh, points, just by existing means it's incomparable. Well, I can also lose them, but that hasn't happened in a while now, he said. Oh, that's great then, it's quite a bit better than mine, she said. Oh, I forgot to ask, does your system make you immortal too? Ning asked. Uh, no, I mean, it helps me in cultivation, and that's enough to get quite a lot of years, right? She asked. Oh, my system makes me immortal. Hmm, that's quite amazing when compared, Ning thought. The creator must be amazing to make a system that can give eternal life to someone. Although that's at the exchange of never becoming a human, that might be an advantage as well, he thought. Anyway, Ning said, did you get the system before death or after? Uh, after, obviously. I was born with the memories of my past life so, when I was little, I had the wisdom of a 23-year-old introvert, Eleonora said. After that, I quickly noticed that there was something floating in front of me. When I started interacting, I realized it was a system. It took me at least 20 years to make use of it though since I needed some level of cultivation base to be able to form enough first-grade artifacts to buy from the system. Ning nodded when he heard that, it wasn't until he collected enough energy to open up the shop before he could make use of the true system either. Hmm, does your system give you any information about itself? Ning asked. Information about itself? Do you mean its origins? Then no it's totally non-existent. I wondered why I got my system and how I got it, but I believed it was a freak coincidence, Eleonora said. Nah, systems are created by some, being and handed out based on specific conditions. In my case, because my life wasn't very good on earth, I was handed this system to live life as I wanted. The only thing I'm not allowed is to mess with other lives unless they mess around first, Ning said. 
There must have been a reason you got it too. Maybe because your life wasn't the best either, and you got lucky. I wonder how many people from the earth that live a tragic life get to have a system and reincarnate, Ning wondered. There are many of my systems floating around the multiverse, so there must be many of yours too. I'm really curious though, I wonder who makes these systems. You know what? I'm just going to check, Ning thought and brought out the interface. Artifact creation system, Ning spoke to the interface and he saw the information he could gain. Holy shit! He shouted when he saw the price even for the beginner information, that was not something he had right now. Damn, must be because of the privacy. He thought and filtered it down as much as possible, and finally hit, buy. Ah, here we go. I got two bits of information about your system, Ning said. First of all, it was made by, a guy whose name I can't speak without at least three tongues, Ning said with a chuckle. And, here is the main information. Artifact Creation System won the award for the second best system in the 6547th system making competition. Holy crap, there are so many systems in this world. Ning was surprised. I seriously thought the energy system was the only one all around. Ning tried to look into more of the information but soon realized how incredibly expensive how any information about the different systems was. Well, at least given the number, we can guess there have been tens and thousands of systems at least. I wonder how they make the systems, Ning wondered. Oh, then that means there are more system owners right? How many are there on this planet? Eleonora asked. Hmm, let me see. Ning said and filtered the information in the interface. His heart bled when he spent nearly a month's worth of energy on a single piece of information. I'm not buying anymore, he thought to himself. Hmm, it says there are, three people in total with a system on this planet. It says they are alive, so I'm guessing we will meet them soon if they grow, Ning said. Oh, that's fine. Also, you look like you're in pain, what's wrong? She asked. Oh. I just used quite a few months worths of energy for that three bits of information, Ning said. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have asked those questions, Eleonora said. Oh, it's fine. At least I learned something from. Bang Ning heard the door shut from far away and a man came running inside. It was a man who seemed to be in his forties. He had black hair streaked with white ones and had a circular face similar to Eleonora and Ender. Father? Eleonora got shocked seeing her father in a rush. She looked behind him and saw that her brother was missing. She started having a bad feeling about it. Father, what's going on? She asked hastily with a worried voice. Ning was a little worried seeing the man's face too. Ely, hurry. You need to. The man turned his head and saw Ning. His eyes turned wide for a second before returning back to his daughter. Who's he? He asked. He's a teacher from the academy, she replied. What's going on? Oh, oh right. Quickly run away. You need to hide somewhere right now. Use that concealing artifact of yours quick, he said. Please explain what's happening, father, Eleonora was getting more and more worried. No time to explain, he's, suddenly, a divine sense spread throughout the whole house and it reached them. The man's face suddenly turned from worried to happy and he started smiling with a calm expression. Here, young nephew Bradley is here to meet us, daughter, he said calmly. Eleonora finally realized what was happening and her mood turned sour. She scowled at her father, who was all smiles now. Come, greet nephew Bradley, the father said and brought her along. Eleonora waved behind her to gesture Ning to follow her. Ning stood up and slowly walked behind them. Yes, brother Bradley. Of course, it's tiresome, but it's also fun. You should try joining the academy, you will definitely not be bored, Ender said as he entered the house. No, making tools for myself is beneath me. As the heir to the Udler house, it is only correct of me to have people that can make stuff for me, little brother. You are the heir to your house too. Remember, if you ever want to be successful, you need to have people working for you, the man named Bradley said. Ning could finally see Bradley fully for who he really was. Bradley was a guy that looked like a young man in his twenties. He had golden blonde hair combed behind him, a not so muscular body, and a very pompous look on his face. The look, however, changed to delight when he saw Eleonora's face. Ah, there you are, Sister Ely. I didn't think I would meet you here, Bradley said. What are you doing here? Eleonora asked with a very rude attitude, but it seemed the man was used to it by now. Oh, you know. I was on my way to the capital after I heard about the massacre in the ceremony this afternoon. But then, I got the message that my father was alive and well, so I didn't need to go there anymore. 
Poor Gray though, I heard his father died today, Bradley said with an almost sad face. Well, by the time I realized my travel there was unnecessary, I decided to come to visit the city. And look who I meet on the street. Ender and his father made apologetic faces. Then, I asked if I could visit here, and it just so happened that you were here, Sister Ely, Bradley said with a smile. We are glad to have you, nephew Bradley, the father said. Hum, Bradley said and finally saw Ning standing a few distances away. Who's he? A servant? Bradley asked. Ah, this is, the father tried to introduce, but he realized too late that he too didn't recognize Ning. Ender finally saw Ning too and was surprised. Bro, I mean, teacher? He asked. Hey, brother Ender. You can call me brother too, Ning said then he looked towards the father and Bradley. Nice to meet you, Mr. Riggett, Mr. Udler. I am, Jackie Chan. I'm a teacher at the Five Professions Academy, Ning said. Ender looked at him weirdly but didn't try to correct him or anything. Eleonora on the other hand needed to contain herself from busting out laughing. A teacher huh? What star are you? I assume it's gold like Sister Elise, Bradley said. Oh, of course not. I could never hope to reach teacher Eleonora's level. I'm still a silver starred teacher, Ning said. Hmm, so you're not even a gold ranked huh? Seriously, why does that academy even bother keeping anything other than gold ranked in their staff? It's just a waste of money to keep anything less, Bradley said with a scoff. Anyway, let's go talk, Sister Ely. I heard your academy was under attack, and I needed to make sure you were okay, Bradley said. Teacher Ning, why are you lying about your name? Ender whispered while they were moving towards the living. I have some circumstances that need me to keep my name hidden, Ning said. Oh, and also, why are you here, aren't you supposed to be in the ceremony? He asked. I left early, Ning said with a smile. Oh, thank God you did. I hear quite a large massacre took place in the ceremony afterward. The crown prince tried to forcefully take the throne and was killed, Ender said. You haven't heard anything else? Ning asked in surprise. Um, no. That's all father told me from what he was reported, Ender said. He was about to tell me more, but, Ender turned towards Bradley and hinted that they were interrupted. Ning understood and smiled. Bradley reached the living room first and said, Oh wow, look at your servants, prepping snacks for me before I even arrived. At least you were doing something right, uncle. Come, Sister Ely. I have a lot to talk about with you, he said and sat in the very middle of the seat. No wonder the father tried to send her away, he's just so annoying, Ning thought. By the way, how is business going, nephew Bradley? The father asked. It's fine. I don't know what we are doing, but it only seems to grow, Bradley said. Anyway, Sister Ely, when are you leaving that academy? Ember Riggett sighed when he saw his one attempt to distract Bradley away from his daughter didn't work. I'm not leaving the academy. It's one of the best places in the entire empire, nay the entire continent. Why would I leave such a place? Eleonora asked angrily. But, it's just a school to make workers. You don't need to do that. You are the lady of a house. If you were to become the lady of a bigger house in the future, you could easily afford to employ those people. You don't need to waste time learning and teaching. Let the others do that, Bradley said. Ember and Ender got a little scared when they heard that and slowly turned to look towards Eleonora. They knew for ages that she was very into making artifacts and no one could get her to stop making them. She would even get extremely angry if someone tried to stop her. Knowing all of that, they started to fear for Bradley's life. Eleonora didn't get angry, however, instead, she gave a mocking smile and asked, If I'm wasting my time learning and teaching, then what would you say is a good use of my time? You should cultivate and become strong. That way, if there is ever a time you get attacked like in the academy, you can easily defeat the attackers. Look at me, I'm already at nascent soul fourth realm, and I did it just at the age of 400 years. I'm one of the youngest ones in the empire to reach this level of cultivation base so early. You are so young and already in the first nascent soul realm at just around 300 years. If you go into closed cultivation for a few years, or even a century, you will surely come out around the same cultivation base as me, Bradley said. Ning chuckled lightly from the side. So he thinks she's weak, huh? Has she not revealed her cultivation base outside of that one time she threatened me? Ning wondered. However, he stopped when he realized something the man had just said. Wait, Singer said that too, but that doesn't make sense, Ning thought. Teacher Eleonora, are you really not even 300 years old? Ning asked. 
Hey, don't butt into our conversation, Silver, Bradley said. Eleonora looked to the side confused and said, Yes, I will be three centuries old in a few years. Why? Ning fell silent for a while and answered, I'm more than 500 years old by now. Ha, huh, so old and still at the first realm of nascent soul. No wonder you are still only a silver. You can't reach up to Sister Ely's position in a lifetime, Bradley said while shaking his head. Ely ignored Bradley for a second and focused on why Ning was surprised, but then she realized. Wait, but we should have been, stop speaking, Bradley suddenly said. My father is trying to communicate with me. He took out his talisman, regardless of what the people around were saying, and started talking into his talisman. We'll talk about this later, Ning said. I said shut it, Silver, Bradley shouted. Then, he focused on the talisman while speaking loudly. Yes, father. Yes. No, I didn't return. I instead came to Uncle Ember's house. Yes, Broken Soul City. Ha <laughs> ha. Sister Ely is here too, so I was quite lucky. Oh, you will? Sure. Then he put down the talisman. My father says he wants to come here, Uncle, Bradley said. Oh, Brother Tyander is coming. That's a surprise. Although I expected him to stay back at the capital due to what had happened, Ember said. Sigh, I guess my old man is scared that there might be something else happening there again soon. Also, he says that Prince Kindley's coronation date has been set for a week later from today, so he will need to stay close by to return there in time, Bradley said. Huh? Wait, what? The Emperor is giving up the throne so soon? I thought he could go on for many years, Eleonora said as she had been the only one to not hear anything about today's events. Also, wait Prince Kindley. But the Crown Prince is Prince Battle. Oh right, due to nephew Bradley's arrival I forgot to give you the important news from today, Ember said. Apparently, in today's medal-giving ceremony, the Crown Prince attacked the Emperor with all of his people. This included the Emperor's Shadow Guard, Normal Guards, and even some family head. Wait, a coup? Eleonora asked. Yes, but an unsuccessful one. They would have succeeded if not for the person from your academy that was there to take the medal. They say he single handedly killed everyone in the coup, just like he did with the intruders in the academy, Ember said. This teacher named Ning Ruagong. Ender looked towards Ning in shock, but Ning acted like it was nothing. Eleonora sneakily looked towards Ning too but didn't bring any attention towards him. She now understood why he had decided to lie about his name. I hear he is very strong. He should be a gold starred teacher in your academy, right, Sister Ely? Bradley asked. Uh, his and my department are different, so I've never come across him before, Eleonora said. Ender was surprised why his sister was even lying. She was not the type to go along with another person's lie. She hated liars the most, after all. Can you tell me more about what happened, father? she asked. Oh, right. More news has come out than we expected. Apparently, the Gassane family weren't traitors or rebels by themselves. They were instead forced to be so because of the crown prince. He killed their heir and then perpetrated the whole thing to bring their downfall, Ember said. Ning was surprised. So easily the information gets twisted so becomes something else, he thought. Battle had indeed planned it all to bring the downfall of the Gassane family, but it was never his intention to make them a traitor and rebels. That was something that happened because of his impulsive decision. Ning decided to not speak on it, however, he could change the facts here, but there were thousands of people out there that knew the wrong info already, and he couldn't change it all. Ember and Bradley spoke some more on what happened while Eleonora spoke a bit in between while looking towards Ning in shock from time to time. Ender however couldn't keep his eyes off of Ning while he heard what his seniors said. Eleonora looked outside and said, Oh, it's dark already. We should go into our quarters now, it's been a long day today. She stood up. Ender, come show brother Bradley to the guest room. I will show teacher N, Jackie the other guest room, Eleonora said. Oh, Ender can show Silver his room, Bradley said. Ender is shy around teachers. He won't do a good host around him. He will do better around you brother Bradley, good night, Eleonora said and left. Ning nodded towards the rest of the people and left as well. Eleonora walked off to a different section of the manor and entered a room. Come, this is where you should stay today, she said. Ning walked inside and nodded. Not bad, he said. Oh, you've seen better? She asked. The Royal Palace Hotel in the Golden Moon City was better, Ning said. Oh, right. You stayed there, I forgot, she said. Was it all true? What they said? 
Some of it was exaggerated, but the main crux of the matter was true, Ning said. Wow, you saved the country from two different threats. I'm surprised the emperor didn't gift you another medal of honor, Eleonora said. I don't think the emperor's mind was there at all. After all, he had just been crippled by his own son, Ning said. Eleonora gasped. The emperor is crippled. Why did that information not get out? She asked in shock. I don't know. Maybe they told the people not to, Ning said. Anyway, let's focus on something more important. Wait, Eleonora said and brought out a rather large, oval shaped artifact from her storage bag. She dropped it onto the ground and suddenly it opened up to reveal five 20 centimeters rods inside that flew out around them. Then, the carving on the bottom of the plate where the rods previously stood started shining. Suddenly, a blue film of light appeared around them, touching the five flying rods, making a perimeter around them. Okay, done. Say what you were about to say, she said. No, we need to talk about this first. What the hell is this? he asked. Oh, this? This is my own little contraption. It's a formation setter, she said. A formation setter? Can you explain a little more? he asked as he looked around at the flying rods. You know how formations work, right? You carve the pattern on the rods, and the rods have to be placed in a proper place for the formation to work and if you mess up even a little, it doesn't work at all. When you are in a fight or a hurry, you can't set a formation in time, or even if you do, the chances of it failing to work is very high. So, I created this little artifact, that sets a formation on its own. At 6th or lower grade formation, the chance of the formation being set is 100%. The chance lowers a bit for 7th and 8th, and drops drastically for 9th. I couldn't find a 10th grade formation, so I couldn't check the accuracy there, she said. How does this work? Ning asked. He was truly fascinated by the weird little artifact. It will take some time to explain, and I don't know if you have any understanding about artifacts to know what I say, Eleonora said. Oh, I can just buy some right now, although, you are right. Let's focus on the important things first, Ning said with an awkward smile. We were born during the same generation back on Earth, right? Eleonora asked. From what information you have provided, absolutely. But, I came to this planet way before you. I think I was roaming the southern continent when you were born, he said. Which doesn't make sense given that we died around the same time, so we should be born at the same time, she said. Unless, you didn't get born right after you died. Maybe your reincarnation took some time, he said. I know mine was immediate because that's what my system told me. Then, what? Does time move differently for the two of us? Eleonora asked. No, but I do have a theory. I think, when you died, your soul went into the reincarnation cycle, and it stayed there for years, Ning said. By the time it was time for you to be born again, over two centuries had passed. That's not a bad theory, I guess, Eleonora said. Although, I thought the afterlife was, fake. I don't know why I think that though, even when I was reborn. I believe it's real. Not because I was reincarnated, but because my system said souls exist and leave a body after they die. I don't think afterlife exists in the same way as heaven and hell do as most people believe, but just as a stationary place where the souls are kept," Ning said. Hmm, if what you say happens to be correct, then it would make sense why we were born in different times despite being dead around the same," Eleonora said. So, where do you think the souls go after death? I, let me look it up," Ning said. You can look up anything? Don't tell me you have a search engine in there," Eleonora asked with a chuckle. Pretty much, Ning said while focusing on the task at hand. Wait, seriously? Damn, my system is a joke by comparison then, Eleonora said. It can help me find anything aside from information on energies itself. For example, I can't look up the types of different energies, or best sources of said energy. On that note, soul is a form of energy too, so, the system has nothing on our question, Ning thought and closed the interface. Oh, that's disappointing, Eleonora said. Yeah, so, uh, are you not leaving? Ning asked. You want me to leave? Eleonora asked inquisitively. I mean, is there something else you want to talk about? Ning asked. Of course. I finally met a person from Earth. I want to talk all night long. Tell me, what year you were born in? Eleonora asked questions after questions. Ning smiled as the nostalgia of it all got to him too. He asked her some questions too. The talked for a few hours, telling each other their depressing daily lives, and soon that talk came to an end too. Then Eleonora started asking about his time on Kumia. 
Ning laughed and started the tale of his journey from when he met Freya. He talked about Clavis, and how he foolishly acted as a god. Eleonora laughed hard when she heard how he nearly screwed it all up by not keeping his emotions in check. Ning found it rude of her to laugh like that, but soon he was laughing at himself too. He talked about his time in the scattered isles and how he became a physician. Then he talked about going to Vilmore, which truly surprised her. Wait, there is a planet that you can go to through the northern continent? I would like to visit there someday, Eleonora said. Yeah, but, if you go there you can't come back, Ning said. It's a one-way trip mostly. Ah, that sucks, she said with a disappointed face. I don't want to leave my family. Tell me more. Ning smiled and continued talking about his travels through the southern continent. He told her the beauty, the weirdness and everything in between in the southern continent. Wait, my brother was the first person you met in the central continent? Eleonora asked. Uh, technically not, but you wouldn't be wrong to say that, Ning said. Now it's your turn, tell me about your life. Eleonora described her life as well. Compared to Ning's it was simple and boring. Ever since she was born, she had been different. It took her some time to get accustomed to the language, and once she was, all she did was try and learn stuff from the library to better her knowledge. The only problem was, her parents were relatively poor at the time, so she couldn't really afford a lot of stuffs. It was only after she started making artifacts and secretly selling, it through her father's merchant business did they grow. Her family was given a noble title from the emperor and the rest was history. Once the family grew to a sufficient level, they no longer needed her help to grow, and she could finally focus on making stuff for her own. She started creating new designs and earned points, she got a decent cultivation method from the system and other handy tools. Unfortunately, it was all for herself and couldn't give it to her brother, if she could, he would probably have a lot higher cultivation base by now. I see. I'm quite surprised you got the gold star so fast, Ning said. Yeah, my teaching methods were just different, and it seemed it worked a lot better for the students. So they kept joining more and more, Eleonora said as she shook her head. Sigh, anyway. I will be leaving now. She touched the base plate on the ground and the rods that were flying around them stopped projecting the white film of barrier. They came together and fell onto the plate which then closed to form the oval artifact once again. She got up to grab the artifact when suddenly a divine sense entered the room and washed over the two of them. Shit. The two of them said in unison. Suddenly, they could hear a storm brewing outside as the loud footsteps got closer. Sigh, this is going to be a problem, Eleonora said. The door slammed open as the lock on it flew everywhere. Sister Ely, did this guy force you to stay here all night? Tell me what he did. I will kill him. Bradley shouted loudly. Go back brother Bradley, we were just talking, Eleonora said. Talking about what? Why was there a formation up such that my divine sense couldn't even enter? Bradley asked. Because it was a secret talk, Eleonora said. Secret? With this silver? That's a lie. From what I can see, you two are having an affair, aren't you? Bradley loudly asked. Yes, Ning said without hesitation. Eleonora looked back shocked but then she heard his voice in her head. Don't worry, I will make sure he leaves you alone. You, Bradley started getting angry, I demand a duel right now. Duel? You mean actual combat right? Ning asked. Of course. Why, are you scared? Bradley asked. Sure, Ning said. But what's the point of this duel? You trying to show that you can beat me only? Of course we will have a bet on it, Bradley said with a hint of confusion on his face. He couldn't understand why this weak guy was so willing to fight him. Ning's eyes brightened when he heard that. All right, let's have a good bet. What's at stake for me? Ning asked. If, if you lose, you will never meet with Sister Ely again, Bradley said. Damn, why are people so P0SSESIVE in the central continent? First Gones now him, he thought. Oh, and my thoughts don't count here? Eleonora looked angrily at Bradley. Am I a tool you can decide if someone uses or not? And no, of course not Sister Ely. I was just trying to keep this good for nothing away from you. What do you even see in him in the first place? He's not rich or strong. He's not even as good of a teacher as you, Bradley said. Oh, then what? Do you think I should get together with you? Eleonora asked. I mean, I, I'm not, uh, opposed to it, I guess. If you really want to, then I won't stop it. Bradley fumbled his way onto the answer. It's okay, my love. I will fight this demon for us, Ning suddenly said from behind. 
Eleonora suddenly looked behind at Ning with angry eyes. Ning winced a little when he saw those eyes. Yikes, I went too far. He made an apologetic face and looked at Bradley. Very well, I agree to your bet. But, what about mine? Ning asked. Say what your bet is. Bradley asked. If I win, you will stay away from the Rigget family for at least 300 years, Ning said. Sure. Bradley didn't hesitate at all when he agreed. Come, let's go to the backyard to fight. Ning nodded and walked out of the room. Bradley angrily walked off towards the back, while Ning followed behind him. When he finally reached outside, Ning was surprised. Oh, it's morning already? He said in surprise. I guess we might have talked all night long. I didn't notice the time go away, Eleonora said. Ender and Ember had heard the shouts inside the house and quickly ran out. What's going on, sister? Ender asked. Brother Bradley is going to have a duel with, the teacher, Eleonora said. Huh? Is he an idiot? Why is he trying to fight with nephew Bradley? Ember asked. Both the siblings didn't say anything and instead walked towards the fight. What is this about? Ender asked using his divine sense. Bradley thinks teacher Ning and I have an affair, so he challenged teacher Ning to a duel, Eleonora replied. What? But he'll die, Ender shouted out loud. Right? Ember said from the side, completely misunderstanding his son's response. Uncle Ember. Please watch over our fight, Bradley said. I'm weaker than you, but sure. Let me be the referee. No killing or crippling and no use of forbidden techniques and items, Ember said. Ning and Bradley got ready. Fight! Bradley suddenly ran forward to attack but suddenly, a golden light flashed in front of him. As soon as the fight started Ning had brought out Aegis. While Aegis' cultivation base wasn't as high as Bradley's, his defense was still top-notch. Even fifth realm nascent soul cultivators would find it difficult to hurt him. Ning took out a chair from his storage bag and put it on the ground before sitting on it with one of his legs on top of the other. Just block his attack until he is tired, Ning said and chilled back. All three of the Rigget family members were shocked when they saw Ning chill like that. Is he trying to kill his beast? Ember asked. That's a suicide. Um, isn't the beast doing quite well on its own though? Ender asked. It should be fine, Eleonora spoke. The beast might actually be able to defend it all. Why do you say that? Do you see something we don't? Ember asked. No, its cultivation base is indeed nascent soul second realm, but, Eleonora didn't speak and just thought back to the time in the academy when she was protecting the many students and this beast was left behind by Ning to protect them. He must have done it because it was good at defense, Eleonora thought. Bradley was raging mad right now. Fight me yourself, you coward. Stop using your beast, Bradley said. If you don't, then I will destroy this beetle into a million pieces. However, no matter how much he shouted, Ning acted like he didn't hear anything and just basked in the morning sunlight. Attack after attack, Bradley threw everything at Ning, but he just blocked each and every single one of his attacks. Bradley was starting to get frustrated. Hey, can you hurry up? I got places to be. I can't spend my remaining life sitting here, Ning said. This just agitated Bradley even more. You bastard, I will kill you, he shouted and started attacking more and more. Finally, after a while, Bradley started huffing and slowed down a bit. Ning looked at Aegis who was doing all the work and asked, tired. No, Aegis said as he shook his head. Rest anyway, you did good, he said and took back Aegis. Ha ha. Finally. Now that your beast is gone. I can easily beat you, Bradley shouted out loud. Ning smiled and was about to bring out Blue to mess with him some more when he heard the door to the back of the mansion open up. A servant opened the door and made the way for a person to walk through. The new man was an older gentleman wearing a greenish yellow robe with light yellow hair. I was wondering why you guys weren't outside to welcome me, turns out you were all back here. Oh, brother Tyander, you're here. I'm sorry I couldn't go out to get you. Ember said when he saw the new man walk in. It's fine, brother Ember. I have two legs and can walk on my own, Tyander said. Oh, the kids are so big now. Sigh, why do they always grow so quickly? Hello, Uncle Tyander. Good morning, Uncle. Bother Ender and Eleonora respectfully greeted the new arriver, Tyander Udler, head of the Udler family. So, what's going on here? Tyander asked as he looked towards his son who was huffing quite hard some form of morning sport. Oh, I'm not sure either. The kids suddenly started fighting this morning and asked. 
Brother Bradley requested a duel early in the morning and is now fighting, Eleonora cut her father off and told Tyander what was happening. A duel? Why? Tyander asked as he turned to look at Eleonora once again. Uh, it's better if you ask your son, uncle, Eleonora said. Okay, Tyander said. He then looked over to his son and asked, Bradley, why are you fighting with? Finally, he turned towards Ning and noticed him, suddenly, he felt as though his world came crashing down, and his worst fear had come to fruition. Tyander ignored everything and directly walked towards his son. Bradley looked to the side and noticed his father walk up too. Huh? When did you come back, father? I will be right there after I beat this ass? Slap the backyard rang when Tyander slapped his son into the ground. You bastard, are you trying to kill yourself? Is that what you wish? Come, I will kill you myself, Tyander said angrily. Wh wa, Bradley couldn't form any sentences. Brother Tyander, why are beating your son? Ember walked forward, completely befuddled as to what was happening. Ender had an inkling of what was going on and looked towards his sister who was the main perpetrator here. She knew what would happen, so she purposefully butt into her elder's conversation and forced Tyander to act. Tyander looked towards Ning and finally spoke. It's a pleasure to see you here, Teacher Ning. I didn't get to thank you back there, so let me take this chance to thank you from the bottom of my heart, Tyander said. Saving, you? Ember looked at Tyander in confusion. Tyander was quite surprised and his face got horrified. We were you trying to keep your identity hidden, Teacher Ning. I'm so sorry, I stupidly revealed it, Tyander said. It's fine. I wasn't really trying to hide it. I was just not using my name when it wasn't needed, Ning said. Thank you for your benevolence, Teacher Ning, Tyander bowed towards Ning. Bradley and Ember were both flabbergasted as to what was happening. Why was the head of the Udler family, one of the strongest families in the Galra Empire bowing his head to a simple teacher? Wait, did you say Ning? Ember suddenly asked, the Ning. You really didn't know, Brother Ember? This is Teacher Ning, the recipient of the Medal of Honor and person who stopped the coup in the capital yesterday, Tyander said. Both Bradley and Ember were shocked when they realized who Ning really was. So what about the duel? Eleonora asked from the side. Duel? Tyander asked. Of course my son loses the duel. There's no way he can beat teacher Ning, right? I agree, Eleonora said. Then what about the bet? Ember looked at her with a hint of confusion. What bet? You guys had a bet in this duel? Of course. Brother Bradley bet that he would never come to the broken soul city for nearly 200 years if he lost this duel, Eleonora said. Tyander looked at his son and asked, Is, is this true? You not only dueled with teacher Ning but also bet with him? I, I didn't know who he was. So I accepted the bet, father, I. Bradley was starting to get flustered. Why did you even duel him in the first place? Tyander asked. Because your son thought that I had an affair with teacher Eleonora, so he came to fight me, Ning said. You idiot, Tyander kicked his son, why do you always have to butt in other people's lives? Why are you like this? Are you acting arrogant just because you are a noodler? Bastard. I was the one who worked hard to make this family. All you do is sit around and make the servants do everything. Erg, I'm getting angry now. Leave right now and go back home. You made a bet, now you will have to be a man and stick to it. Never come to the broken soul city for 200 years, Tyander said. Be but father, I haven't lost yet, Bradley said. What? Do you think you can win just because teacher Ning went easy on you? Do you think you can fight against a dozen of the emperor's shadow guards like he did? Tyander asked. And no, Bradley's head drooped. Then leave. Fulfill your bet, Tyander demanded. Why yes, father. Bradley stood up and walked ahead. Goodbye uncle, brother Ender, sister Ely. Bradley immediately flew and went away. Whether it be because of his father's fear or Ning's fear, he would forever stick to the bet and not come close to Broken Soul City for over two centuries. Sigh, I let you see something unsightly, Teacher Ning, Tyander said. It's all right, Ning said. Ah, you must be bored from our little father son squabble. Please, let's go in, Tyander said. The five of them went inside and talked for a bit. Ning answered whatever question he could of the two old men and asked some of his own. Eleonora asked Ning to stay around until the academy started, which he happily accepted. Tyander was quite happy to be around Ning and make a friend of him as well. The academy had three months before it opened back up, but to cultivators, that was but a blink of an eye. Before they knew it, 
it was time to return back to the five professions city and go back to teaching once more. Beads of sweat rolled down Ning's face as he put all of his focus on the cauldron in front of him. The cauldron was different from his hollow jade cauldron, it looked much sturdier, was much wider, and had things that didn't look like alchemy ingredients inside. Instead, the items inside looked like they were molten metal. Ning focused on the metal until he felt that the metals inside were at a certain equilibrium. He immediately pulled out the liquid metal using his chi and started forming it into different pieces of separate items. Once they were all done, he started assembling them. He already had leathers from different beasts prepared as well as wood from a very strong tree. Before he knew it, he had finished assembling the items. Next, he had to align the newly formed items' chi lines to do what he wanted them to do when he poured in chi to the item. Not every craft required chi lines, but most did. Ning touched onto the item and started sending in his chi to forcefully make new chi lines. The better the chi lines, the better the grade of the item would be. His chi ran rampant, but in an orderly manner as it entered the metal, leather, and wood. After nearly an hour of concentrating and more beads of sweat, he was finally done. Phew. He wiped off his sweat and looked at the final artifact he had created. The artifact was a chariot that could fly in the sky at incredible speed. Unlike other flying artifacts, this one had seats in it for him to just sit down normally, instead of sitting on the ground. Ning took the chariot outside and started using it. He got onto it and poured in his chi. Soon, the chariot started hovering, and it started flying away. I did it! He shouted and finally showed a smile on his face when he realized that he had been successful. He roamed the back of the house for a few minutes and came back down to the backyard. Eleonora was there waiting for him. Oh, he Ely, when did you come out? He asked. Just now. You were in there for about three days, I see you've made a new one. What grade did it come out to? Ely asked. Fourth, Ning said happily. Hey, that's not too bad. You can make fourth grade artifacts in just three months, people would be jealous if they find out, she said. Ning just laughed. What grade do you think you could make if you didn't try to learn it all on your own? Ely asked. After a couple of days of practice, I would consistently make 8th or 9th grade, and soon reach 10th grade. Having almost all the knowledge is not that fun honestly, Ning said. Well, I wouldn't know. I had to learn most of it on my own, Ely said. Yeah, I'm trying to do that too. It's so much more fun. Every little advancement makes me feel like I've grown as an artifact crafter, Ning said. You already know pills and beasts. Now, you are learning artifacts. Are you going to learn about formations and talismans too? Ely asked with a chuckle. Maybe. I do have quite a lot of years that I need to stay here. At the same time, I can't hurry up either. It's very annoying, Ning said. How long do you have to stay again? Ely asked. Hum, let me check, Ning said. Status, status name. Ning Ruagong Energy, 168.48 trillion. Separated energy heat energy, 920 billion sound energy, 22 billion. Qi energy, 167.32 trillion kinetic energy, 218 billion. Ether energy, zero skill. Sigh, I need close to 2200 years just to get the body, Ning said. As for the other stuff, I might have to forget about them for a while, Ning said. 2200 years, that's not possible for even the strongest people to live. Unless one goes into closed cultivation, it should be impossible, Ely said. It's fine, I can add a thousand or two more years to someone's lifespan by simply giving them the new body cultivation that I will buy soon. In fact, I should look it up right now, Ning said and started checking his interface. Oh, it costs about 40 trillion energy and needs you to be at least a level 37 body cultivator. I don't think neither Hai Si nor Anya and their families are at that level yet, Ning said. Oh right, here. Take this as a form of payment for letting me stay here for the last three months. Ning took out two talismans and handed them over to Ely. Ely caught it and read it. These are the cultivation techniques. Ooh, I will gratefully take these. Thank you, Ely said with a chuckle. All right, it's been a while so I will go check up on my disciples and their family. I will go to the academy in about four days, Ning said. Oh, you're not returning with us? Ely asked. I don't know when I will get the next free time. So I will go now, Ning said. Goodbye. He disappeared. Shit. That ability always makes me jealous, Ely lightly said. She then looked at the cultivation techniques in her hands and was very surprised. Wow, these are much better than I expected. No wonder he is so strong. 
Once father and brother learn this, we won't have to keep staying low-key anymore, Ely thought. Finally, Ely decided that it was time for her family to grow, to take on more business ventures and do riskier things. She walked back inside and quickly copied the techniques down into four more talismans and handed it over to Ember and Ender. Ning already went ahead, so ET-00 will be going now, father, Ely said and walked outside. A carriage was waiting for her, but she shook her head, instead, she brought out a flying boat that could house both her and her brother. Once the two of them were settled, they said their goodbyes and flew towards the academy. Ning stopped cultivating. He had returned from the northern continent a few ago and had returned to teaching. He walked out of his underground quarters and made his way out onto the alchemy wing. Hello, teacher Ning, a teacher greeted him. Hello, Ning greeted back and went on with his day. Good morning, teacher Ning, another teacher greeted him. Ning greeted him back too. When he finally reached the staff room, most of the teachers turned around to greet him. Ning sighed on the inside but greeted all of them. He quickly set up his classes for the day and left. He went to his class and waited for the students to arrive. It was barely a few minutes before the students started coming in. Good morning, teacher Ning. How was your day yesterday? A student asked as she walked in. Good morning. My day was fine. How ab, teacher Ning? Good morning, another student greeted him. Ning was about to answer when another student greeted him again, and then another, and another. He was greeted all the way until the final student arrived and there were no more seats in his room for the others. The students who arrived after the final students could only go back with a disappointed face. Ning was surprised when he realized that one of the students that couldn't make it to the class was Rhea, who just looked saddened as she walked away from the door. Ning looked at his class and saw that more than half of these students were people he had never seen before. He wanted to ask a student to leave so Rhea could come in and learn, but he couldn't play favorites as a teacher. He sighed and finally spoke up. All right, today we will be learning about ingredients with fire materials in it. Let's start with a few examples of fire materials. Ning started teaching for the next three hours. He taught the knowledge he knew as well as he could, but he could see many of the students getting bored. Some even yawned inside the classroom and that made Ning a little annoyed. There were students out there that missed this class because of these people, and yet they weren't paying any attention at all. For the entirety of the three hours of teaching, maybe a thousand out of the ten thousand students actually paid proper attention. The others were here for something else. All right, any questions? Ning asked. Several students, including the bored ones, suddenly raised their hands. Their boredness seemed to have suddenly disappeared as well. You, Ning pointed at one of the boys. Teacher, is it really true that you are only at the first nascent soul realm? Someone asked. Uh, yes, Ning said. He was surprised at the question, but perhaps he shouldn't have been. This had been happening for the last two days as well. He pointed at another student. They say you turned down the opportunity to become an emperor, is that true? The student asked. What? Who's spreading such false rumors? Ning was surprised. Neither of the students he chose asked any proper questions so he called out one of the students that he remembered were paying attention. Can you explain more about this thing you said regarding fire moss and us not being able to replace it with other ingredients? Is there a reason? The student asked. Ning smiled when he finally heard a question related to today's class. It's not that fire moss can't be replaced at all. Do you know the energies found in the fire moss plant? Ning asked. Yes, fire and water, the student answered. Yes, you see, fire and water are opposite energies. In most cases, the one that has a higher quantity or quality will usually destroy the other when you mix those together. So, when making pills that require you to put water and fire in equal amounts at the same time, you could technically go with two different ingredients that have an equal amount of both, but how do you tell if any ingredients have that amount in equal quality or quantity? The slightest mistake, which is very much possible, will ruin your entire set of ingredients. Fire moss are naturally occurring red plants in the ocean. They gather fire energy while keeping it from going astray with equal water energy. It's the only ingredient in this planet that will always have fire and water in equilibrium. So, that's why I say it's an irreplaceable ingredient. Understand? Ning asked. The student made a face of realization. Ah, thank you for the explanation, teacher, the student said and sat back down. Ning smiled and chose another student to ask some questions. You. Yes. The student shouted out. Teacher Ning, how can we become just as strong as you? Is there a secret? 
Ning nearly lost his cool when he heard that question. I'm not answering any questions that have nothing to with alchemy. If you have such a question, just put your hands down. More than 80% of the students put down their hands and Ning felt horrible. These students weren't here to study at all. They were all there to see and talk with the famed teacher Ning who defended the academy and saved the emperor during the coup. Ning was a celebrity for these people, not a teacher. This had happened for the last two days as well, but it was much greater today, and that made him feel horrible. You, he asked one of the remaining hands in the air. Um, is there a pill or something that we can eat to get as strong as you? The student asked. That was the final straw. All right, class dismissed. Ning immediately walked out and went out to find Principal Sinjur. The principal was sitting in the underground looking at some talisman when Ning reached him. Oh hey, Teacher Ning. Are your classes over? Sinjur asked as he walked in. Ning walked up to Sinjur and said, Principal, I would like to ask that I be allowed to go into closed cultivation for the next few years. Um, is there a reason, Teacher Ning? We can't allow teachers to leave their spots for no reason unless they are gold starred or haven't had a free time in years, Sinjur said. Ning sighed and explained everything. Ah, oh, I see. That is indeed very, sad, Sinjur said. I didn't expect your popularity to be your one detriment when it came to teaching. I would be fine with it if only the ones that actually wanted to study could get a chance to enter too, Ning said. I get what you mean. There have been times like this when a teacher suddenly goes up to gold rank, and suddenly everyone comes to see how they teach. Fortunately, those people do care about the teaching, unlike the students going to yours, Sinjur said. However, I don't think you need to go into closed cultivation for that, Sinjur said. How about you limit your classes to two classes every week? That way you can keep teaching and the students will leave you alone. Uh, I'll try I guess, Ning said and returned. Over the next couple of weeks, Ning lowered his classes to two classes a week. Each week he taught one class of alchemy and one class beast masters. Every third week, he also taught one class of physicians, and one class of bug handling. In this way, he separated his time by teaching very sparingly. Even then, that didn't help at all. Due to the limited teaching time, the students would use that one day to meet him, and it once again ruined his teaching experience. No, I can't let this keep on going, Ning thought and went up to Sinjur once again to confront him. However, Sinjur surprisingly agreed, making Ning very confused. Haha, don't look at me like that, Teacher Ning. Remember what I said? Gold starred teachers can freely go into closed cultivation. Go and hide by yourself while your fame dies down. I'm sure the academy can wait, Sinjur said. Thank you, Principal Sinjur, Ning said and left. He went back out and found a few of his students. He met Rhea and gave her a few books to study on her own. She expressed her thoughts about becoming a teacher once she was done graduating from the academy in a decade or so. He told her to do so. He met Nilo and talked to him for a bit. He learned about how Nilo was very close to finding his cure on his own. Ning smiled and gave him a talisman with the answers so that he could learn what other directions he could have gone to find the cure. He talked about how he was likely going to be the next emperor of the empire and should learn about politics while he was at it. Nilo was a little sad about it all, but he accepted that as something he should do. He was currently alone in the academy since his mother had already returned by his father's side to become the empress of the empire. He expressed his desire to return back to the capital once his studies were done and go and become the crown prince he had come to be by fate. Ning then went to Ender and talked to him for a while, he also gave him some books to learn in his free time. Ender had the opportunity to learn alchemy with Ning for three whole months, so his overall level as an alchemist had gone up by a few notches. Although it wasn't to the same level as Hai Si or Anya, Ning considered Ender as his pseudo-disciple now. Ning then went around to the various teachers and students to meet them for a while, he just told them what he was planning to do and they all supported his decision. Finally, Ning went to Ely. It was getting close to evening time by now, and Ely was in the artifact wing's staff room. Hey, he called out. Oh, hi. What's up? Ely asked. So, I am going to a closed cultivation soon, Ning said. Oh, for how many months? Ely asked. Um, for a few decades, at least, Ning said. Ely stopped. The information was too jarring for her brain to understand in a single moment. Wait, a few decades? So long? She asked. Yeah, it just feels like the right thing to do. I need to get stronger as a cultivator and I also need energy. 
Staying awake for hundreds of years, it just feels dreadful, Ning said. We have to do that too, Ely said. Ha ha, Ning chuckled, it's a little different, in a way. I am immortal, you guys are not. Two thousand years is an eternity for a mortal, and a lifetime for a nascent soul cultivator. But for me, there will come a time when two thousand years will go by in the blink of an eye. There will be times when I will go to sleep during the birth of a child, and wake up when that child is dying of old age. It's a haunting thought, really, Ning said. You're talking about this like you will be gone for centuries, Ely said. Ha ha, I won't. But, it's just that, I'm afraid everyone, everything around here will change when I come back out, and in a sense, this is goodbye for the current world. Although, I guess that's the life of an immortal. I will have to say goodbye to things a lot from now on and welcome the changes whether I like it or not. So, uh, I will hopefully see you later. Take care, Ning said and turned around to walk away. Don't worry about it when you come out, Ely said from behind him. Even if everything changes, I won't. I will be here for you while you come out. Ning stopped and looked back before smiling slightly. Thank you, he said and went back to his room. Ning properly closed the door and fortified it before sitting down on his bed. He was a little nervous about going into closed cultivation, but he still closed his eyes and breathed. Soon, he was cultivating. Over the course of the next few years, Ning continued his closed cultivation. Since he entirely focused on his cultivation, in just a couple of years, he broke through to the next realm. Once he broke through, he started going into timer-based energy absorption. It was incredibly mentally exhausting to go in and out of the body every single time, but slowly, after a few years, he got used to it. Once enough time had passed, he left the closed cultivation. He went around the sect, met the old people that were there, and met the new people that were there. Rhea and Nilo had already left the academy, along with many, many of the students Ning knew. Similarly, many others had come to join as well. The world was vast, and there would always be enough students to fill the academy. Ning's name was remembered, but it wasn't revered as it was during the first few months. When he started back his classes, only students that wanted to study joined it and he was happy. Also, being a gold-starred teacher, Ning started helping out the academy by making high-grade pills for them. However, he always made sure that the pills were 8th or 9th grade in quality. As for 10th grade, it would create chaos, so he kept those for himself. Sinjur was pretty happy with just that. His teaching was great, and he was a gold-starred teacher, so soon enough, his past fame caught up to him, and he was starting to get students that only came there because of him. So, once Ning taught for a few years, he went back into closed cultivation again. His only regret during this time was that he didn't get to meet Ely who had also gone into closed cultivation. The next time he left was about two decades later, once again, he taught and helped the academy. He looked at the change and accepted it. There were a lot of new teachers and students around him, but he didn't let that bother him. After a few more years, once he felt it was time, he went into closed cultivation again. The next one was 30 years long, then 50, then 80, then 120, then 40, then 68. He went in and out of closed cultivation for a lot of time, and in these times many things change. Sinjur had died of old age by now. The principal of the academy was Maeve. Jazir had gone into his final closed cultivation wherein he would try to break through to the spirit transformation realm or die trying. He learned the news of the second gold-starred alchemy teacher in sect dying of old age as well. On the beast master's side, teacher Kang had retired of old age. Gonez was the second best teacher in the whole wing, behind only Ning. Ender had at some point graduated as well and left the academy. Ning was quite saddened to hear all of this. However, there was also good news. Many teachers had joined the academy to teach once again. One of them was Rhea who was doing incredibly well and was already a silver-starred teacher. Dazen, one of the best students from his physician classes had also become an alchemy teacher that started focusing only on being a physician as well. Ning learned of Nilo's name being rung about as the next emperor of the Galra Empire. Ning taught for a few more years and went back to closed cultivation once more. However, during all of these years, he kept having that one regret, he never got to meet Ely at all. Sigh, let's just go on a long one, he thought and entered his room once more. Time flew by but Ning felt none of it. With most of his days being spent asleep inside his spear, he couldn't feel the passage of time at all. He cultivated outside for a while, but after every single breakthrough, he only focused on his energy gathering. Thanks to this, his body hadn't grown much at all. 
In total, his body was currently less than 300 years old right now. If he were to tell people that he reached the seventh nascent soul realm in 300 years, people would probably start getting ill out of jealousy. He had also changed his body cultivation technique by now, and it was incredibly effective, although, it was so painful that he wanted to get rid of his pain receptors at some points. However, he realized the problems that could cause and didn't do it, instead, he just fought against the pain with sheer force and finally jumped the hurdle. He had also passed along the cultivation technique to Hai Si and Anya and told them not to give it to anyone that wasn't already at the 36th level of body cultivation, or they would die. Now that he knew they would live for quite a long time, he freely went back into his energy absorption task with no longer a need to care about anyone, mostly. He went in and out of the spear so many times that he lost count of it, he couldn't tell if it was day or night, or how many months or years had passed. His mind was numb to the things he was doing and at one point he started doing it on just simple instinct. Since he was gathering energy through just chi, he was also in a way cultivating, and before long, he broke through to the final realm possible on this planet as well. He could tell, his time on this planet was coming to a close very soon. Finally, Ning stopped the process. He didn't know how long it had been, but it had been many years for sure. He decided to no longer do the closed cultivation for a while and instead simply live life a little, after all, there wasn't much longer for him. So, with that decided, he opened the barricade on his door and walked out. 